Would the Miami Heat be able to win the NBA Finals if they acquired Damian Lillard? That is what is on tap for you guys in today's show. This is the Heat Report. I am Nick Roloff. We are going to look at the past 10 NBA champions, offensive ratings, defensive ratings, and what I think makes an NBA Finals winner, and if the Heat would have that on their roster come October if they did acquire Damian Lillard. So let's jump right into the show, and we're going to start with the first thing that is needed, in my opinion, and that is an elite offense. Not a great offense, an elite offense. And when you look at what is required across the league, this is an offensive league. Scoring is all the way up right now, so when you think of the best teams in the NBA, you think offense. And it the stats kind of show that as well. When you look at the past 10 NBA champions, offensive rating, and this is the number and the statistic that I am focusing on when it comes to the offense. These are your past 10 NBA winners. You'll see the Warriors on there four times and some other teams as well. But one common trend is the fact that we have top half offenses. And there was one exception to this uh, idea from me, and that is the 2021-22 Golden State Warriors. And we'll get into their defensive rating in a second, but that is how they were able to combat their low offensive rating. But you got the Nuggets this year with the fifth offensive team. Warriors 17th, Bucks 6th, Lakers 11th, Raptors 5th, Warriors 3rd, 1st, Cleveland 3rd, Warriors second and Spurs seventh. So it is very common to see that the My or the NBA champions are going to have a good offensive rating. And if you really think about it, it makes sense because when the game matters the most, when the playoffs are here and the brights are the lightest and the defense tightens up, you're going to need an offense that can put up 105 plus in the biggest moments. And if you look back to the NBA finals last season where the Miami Heat, Miami Heat lost, they only got to 100 points, that triple digit threshold one time in five games and spoiler alert the one time they did score over 100 points they won the game so offense does certainly matter in the league and when you look at what held the Miami Heat back I mentioned that they struggled last season in the NBA finals with their offense it was a theme the entire season they were 25th in offensive rating last season so that simply wasn't going to cut it now that was part of the miracle run, the eight-seeded Heat getting to the NBA Finals, was the fact they went from one of the worst offensive teams in the league to one of the most effective offensive teams in the NBA playoffs, and that's what led them to upset the Bucks in the first round, beat the Knicks in the second round, and then upset the Celtics in seven, getting to the NBA Finals. It was a shock. But now let's transition to what their offense would look like if they had Damian Lillard on this Miami Heat roster. They were 25th last year in offensive rating. Let's look at what Damian Lillard-led offenses look like over the last eight seasons. This past year, the Blazers had the 18th offensive rating in the NBA. In 21-22, they had 27th, but don't look too far into that because Damian Lillard only played in 24 games, so it's not like he had a handprint on that roster. Well, let's look at the next three seasons. Second, third, third. He has a history of leading an offensive team. When you think of Damian Lillard, you think offense, you think shooting. In the stats back it up, he has had a top half offense in the NBA in six of the last eight seasons he has played, and I would say six of seven realistically, because if I throw away the 21-22 season, because he did only play 24 games. So he does tend to lead good offensive rosters, and I think he would be able to do that with the Miami Heat, right? Like, he'll have Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo as his co-stars, so he'll have a little bit of offensive pressure taken off his shoulders, which will allow him to cook even more as he progresses into his older age. Damian Lillard has had a history of having good offenses on this team or on his team, so I expect that it would be the same in the Heat would jump from that 25th offensive rating last season to a top half offense of team once again. I really do think a Miami Heat led or their Damian Lillard led Miami Heat team would have a really good offense. Do you love the Miami Heat? 
I expect you guys to. Or if you're just an NBA fan, thanks for clicking on in this video. But if you do love the Miami Heat, show me in the comment section by spamming those 305s, that Miami area code where the Heat play some ball. Let me know in the comment section if you love the Heat, spam those 305s. Second thing that I look at is great defense. Not elite. It doesn't have to be elite. That would be helpful. But an elite offense met with a great defense is usually where you have common success among the last 10 champions. You look at the last 10 NBA championship winners, the Larry O'Brien holders of the past 10 seasons. And this one's even more common than the offensive rating, right? There is always a good defensive team. The Nuggets were the worst defensive team of the last 10 champions, and that's very fascinating to me. I think they maybe got a little help from the Miami Heat struggles on offense, but the Warriors in 2021-22 were the best defensive team in the league. So like I showed you on the offensive graphic, there was an outlier because the Warriors had the 17th ranked offense but they had the number one defense. So being at that top echelon level in one of your ways, whether it be offense or defense, is always helpful, or you can just be good at both. But the Bucks had a top 10 defense. Lakers and Raptors were top five. Warriors were 11th in 2018, 2017. They were second. Cavs, that magical 3-1 comeback team, had a 10th rating. The Warriors team that got their first ring, against the Cavs in 2015 was the best defensive team. And then that Spurs team that closed out their dynasty by splitting the NBA finals with the Miami Heat had the third ranked defensive team in the league. And it kind of shows you that you're going to need to have a good defense to be able to win. Every single team is top half at bare minimum with most of them finishing in the top 10. So you ask yourself, well, how do the Heat stack up over the past four or five seasons with their defensive rating. Well, ever since Jimmy Butler joined the Miami Heat in 2019-20, they have had a top half defense every single year. And this is kind of going to my point. Like, Damian Lillard isn't the best defender. He'll bring the offensive rating with him, and he'll lower your defensive rating. But I am going to trust that Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo are going to lead this Heat defense to a top half rating like they have over the past four seasons. The proof's in the pudding. Spolstra, Jimmy, and Bam are going to have a good defense no matter what. And I don't think Damian Lillard would really take away from that whatsoever. I do believe that the defense would be very good even with Lillard coming because he doesn't really guard too many people out on the perimeter. And here's kind of where I land with Bam and Abayo and this Heat defense. I truly believe that whenever Bam is on the Miami Heat, whether it be four years from now, whether it be next year, whether it be eight or nine years from now, whenever Bam is on this Heat team, they're going to have a top half defense. And I say that with a lot of confidence because I've said it on camera before, and I'll stick with my statement that he is the best defender in the NBA. So when you have the best defender, a versatile big man that can guard one through five realistically and protect the paint, you're you're going to have an elite defense. So I am always going to be under the belief that the Heat will have a top half defense in this league and have a chance to compete. Because if you have a good defense, you will always have a chance to win ball games in the NBA. Make sure you hit that sub button because we have Heat news, we have Heat rumors, we have analysis. We have everything for you guys on tap when it comes to your Miami Heat, whether it be a trade rumor or whether it be breaking down some ball and what is going to happen in this upcoming Heat season like we're doing on today's video. Make sure you join nearly 5,000 strong and hit that sub button. Third thing that I look at is playoff performers and the Miami Heat certainly have their share of playoff performers. We'll take a look at the Heat's number one guy real quickly, Jimmy Butler, because he's played 64 career playoff games in the 305 since coming here in 2019, and he has been nothing short of spectacular in his tenure with the Heat. He's averaged 24.7 points per game in the postseason while putting up seven rebounds and 5.7 assists and shooting efficiently. efficiently excuse me. But Jimmy Butler has that killer in 
instinct that not a lot of players have in the league. And I mentioned on yesterday's show, he is also one of the better leaders in the association because he instills confidence in his teammates by his aura himself. He exuberates confidence in himself, which just allows the, his teammates to believe they will always have a chance to win ball games. Jimmy Butler is one of the best playoff performers in the NBA. He rises to the occasion at every single level. So he is going to lead that Heat team with Dame, Jimmy, and Bam in the postseason. You might ask yourself, how is Damian Lillard going to fit on this Heat team in the postseason? Well, don't you worry, because he is excellent in that postseason himself, averaging 25.7 points per game. But the efficiency is what makes me very, very excited for Damian Lillard to help this team win in NBA Finals because he performs in the postseason himself. 46% from the field, but 45% from three. This dude has playoff moments throwing daggers in the heart of Oklahoma City Thunders fans, hitting that little 38-foot step back on Paul George to send them home, waving them goodbye. Damian Lillard is one of the best playoff performers. It's a shame that we haven't seen him on the highest level. The farthest he's ever got in the postseason is the Western Conference Finals. But I can't knock him too much because you look at Joel Embiid and he's never even been to the conference finals. So Damian Lillard as that one or second option on a postseason team could be very dangerous. And then you throw in the wild card. That is Bam Adebayo, the big man inside. He's averaged 15.9 points per game in 69 career playoff games, all with the Miami Heat. Nine rebounds, 3.4 assists. 50 plus percent from the field and a really good sign is we know that Bam can shoot from the charity stripe because if you have a big man that can hit free throws when it matters the most that will only help your team close games in the postseason and they can't play a hack a shack or something like that. So when you stack up the three guys that would lead this Heat team, look at their playoff stats side by side. They're all averaging 16 plus a game. They all get on the glass and rebound, finish possessions, which is key. And they all shoot 46 percent from the field or better and that's not even three point numbers that's just from the field this big three would be elite in the postseason and they have it all to be able to win a championship it's just hard to put into words how much I am excited to potentially see this team play together these three guys play and they would absolutely lead this heat team deep into the playoffs and hopefully win an NBA finals I'll throw a bonus thing. The main three things that I wanted is an elite offense, a great defense, and playoff performers. But I think the elite thing that could push this Heat team over the edge is having an elite head coach. And guess what? Your Miami Heat have the best head coach in the NBA and a top 15 coach in NBA history. If you remember a couple years ago when they voted for NBA 75, Eric Spolstra was on that list of top 15 coaches in history. So you have one of the best coaches in the NBA, one of the best coaches in history. It is very obvious to me the adjustments that Eric Spolstra can make and is willing to make. He is so good at adjusting on the fly, and he is always going to have that coaching advantage. And you saw it this past postseason. He had the worst roster in every single playoff series, and he was able to win one, two, three, and came up short in the finals. But those adjustments that he made got them to the finals and beat the Celtics, Bucks, and Knicks. I just laid out three things plus a bonus thing that is why I think the Miami Heat could win the NBA Finals. So I'll ask you guys, would you think the Miami Heat win the NBA Finals with Damian Lillard. Type Y if you think they would. Type N if you think they don't win the finals. I'll tell you what, I'm definitely typing my Ys. And that's kind of where I stand, right? They absolutely will. I've said this a couple of times. You get Damian Lillard, you add a 30 plus point per game score on, in the regular season to this roster, you're going to be a good offensive team. You're going to still have that defensive ability when you have Jimmy Bam and Eric Spolstra. You have three playoff performers. Bam sometimes does disappear in the postseason, but it's not something I am concerned about. 
um, because he is able to still have those explosion-type games, a 20-point triple-double closeout game on the road in Game 5 against the Milwaukee Bucks this year. He was able to go on the road and dominate the Celtics in Game 7, and he was able to do it against the Knicks. So he does show up in postseason games. There will be times he is frustrating to watch in the playoffs, but that's also him as a second option. Damian Lillard comes to this team. It's now Dame and Jimmy leading the offense and Bam leading the defense. So Bam will become less frustrating to watch on offense because you have Dame and Jimmy. And let's go back to my four things and if the Heat would check off those boxes if they added Damian Lillard. Elite offense. Check. Dame has always had a top half offense outside of the last past two seasons. A great defense. Since Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo have joined the Miami Heat in 2019 together, they have always had a top 11 defense. Playoff performers, Jimmy, Dame, what else do I have to say? Those two are two of the best at performing in the postseason. And an elite head coach, Eric Spolstra, the best coach in the league. And there really isn't any debate to that to me. I know a lot of people would consider Steve Kerr, but I don't think it's even close, to be honest. You give Eric Spolster that roster as well. He is going to win some NBA championships. There is no doubt about it. And you saw what he was able to do with a D. Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosch-led team. Two finals in the last four seasons. Eric Spolster is one of the best coach in the league. That's going to do it for today's show. Make sure you guys do hit that sub button. And thanks for watching and tuning out in throughout the video. I do love talking basketball rather than sometimes talking those news and rumors. And it was fun to have a fully dedicated show to just talking hoops and why the Heat will win the NBA Finals in 2024 if they do get Damian Lillard. So make sure you hit that sub button if you want more ball talk surrounding your Miami Heat in the future.